Hello everyone and welcome back to Drama Made Simple. This channel is all about acting lessons that you can do at home and by yourself. So if you're looking for more things like that, I really recommend that you would subscribe and hit the notification bell down below so you know when new videos are uploaded. This video is part of a series on this channel all about different elements of Stanislavski's system and examples of different exercises you can do that would be related to Stanislavski's method. So I will have that playlist link down below for you guys as well if you want to see more things like that. The last video was all about analysing a play so I'll have that linked as well because that'd be useful to do before this video and this one is going to be all about breaking down a scene. In Stanislavski's system it's referred to as bits or units or beats that you want to divide a play up into smaller sections basically. The purpose is to divide the play up into smaller parts so that you can properly guide the forward motion of the play towards the specific end point. It's done during the rehearsal process Process so that when you put back together all the different bits the play should flow better and it will be more clear how the story is being moved forward by each of the smaller sections. The bits can be seen as a blueprint for the play overall or they could be seen as if you were going through a forest and you wanted to mark your way to find your way back or in case you got lost that along the way at any significant point you would leave a marker and that could be seen as what the bit is. It's like a point in the play along the way to the end point. In order to understand where the bits should be coming in in the play, the first thing you need to ask yourself is what is the one thing that you can't have this play without? So the main event of the play without which the play would not exist. And from there you can say okay what events lead up to this event occurring and the main ones afterwards that are necessary for the play. And then from gaining the events that are leading up to the main event you will get generally the scenes of the play, the different main scenes you'd be able to obtain from doing that and then from there you want to ask yourself well what do I need for each of these smaller scenes to exist and from there you'll end up with different chunks of activity that lead to the scene coming together all of those scenes together lead, lead up to the main event of the play so from seeing how all of these smaller elements of the play all lead up to different events which all together lead up to the main event it makes it more clear to the actors how the play should be moving forward so if you you were just looking at the play as is and going through each of the smaller elements you might get sidetracked by the smaller elements and not really be able to see how that comes together to form the play as a whole whereas understanding where all of those smaller elements come from is really useful for the actors to be able to grasp the full feeling of the play because you can really see how the smaller elements or the smaller sub scenes influence the entire play. So I mentioned that you could also call bits by units which is how they're referred to in some translations of Stanislavski's work but people often think that these are too scientific sounding and you know the bits aren't necessarily set in stone because it, it's very personal how the bits would be divided up. One person might see it as starting or ending in one place and another person might see it in a different way. It shouldn't really be seen as this scientific be all end all thing so the reason bits is used more often is that it allows for the blurriness and the non-definiteness to be taken into account and as well the bits are going to be character dependent as well so whichever point of view you're looking at or whichever perspective you're working from that will change how the bits sort of form so if you're working with a group of actors it might be the case that you would decide as a group some bits for the play but then each individual actor might want to reimagine the bits for themselves so that it makes more sense from their character's point of view it's often confusing for people to understand how to decide where a bit ends or a bit begins so there's a few sort of key elements that are are often used at, for that. So one is when a character enters or exits the scene, that will either start or end a bit. Another is when there is a change in the subject matter of the dialogue. And another is when there is a change in a character's tactics. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. This will be dependent on which character's point of view you're looking at. So in order to explain what I meant by tactics, I'm just going to talk about objectives. So these are your character's goals and desires and the backbone to how how action and emotions can be true on stage is understanding what your character wants and how they're going to get it. And Stanislavski said that 
that at the heart of every bit is an objective and vice versa so each bit will be formed around a given objective and you can think as well objectives or goals will have larger steps and smaller steps as well so different things that you'd need to do in order to obtain whatever goal it is and Stanislavski said that there is correct and incorrect objectives that people can have or actors can have and he gave some general guidelines of how you can decide which objectives are correct so he said that right objectives should be towards other actors and not towards the spectators. If your objective as an actor is to show off in front of the crowd, like that's not going to bring anything real to your performance. So that's the wrong kind of objective to have. Secondly, they should be personal but analogous to your character. So yes, the objectives are personal in the sense that each actor who plays a character will have a different perspective on the character and will have a different specific understanding of the character's goals. However, they should still be true to the character so that other people would still understand how you derived these objectives. They should be creative and artistic. So as an actor, your goal is to create true human life on stage and render it in an artistic form. So it's important that your objectives are creative and artistic. They should be truthful in the sense that the audience should be able to believe in them, the other actors should be able to believe in them, and you yourself should be able to believe in them, as well as being able to connect you to the character. They should be emotive and able to draw you closer to the character. And they should also be very clear and specific as well as you don't want them to be a shallow or surface level objective but a deep seated objective that's able to carry your character through the play. So Stanislavski said that the way to unlock what character objectives speak to you is to look at each of the bits and try to assign an objective for your character to them with the phrase I want to blank. And then by getting very specific with these sort of labels, then you will be able to truly understand the objectives of your character in each bit. And these smaller objectives all together will probably lead to a larger objective, also known as the super objective of a character, which would be their overall like lifelong goal would be their super objective. And along the way, they have these smaller objectives that lead up to that. Actors often ask themselves, what is my motivation in this scene? And that's a way for you to also think about the objectives. And these are psychological and physical. So they're psychological because it's exactly what your character wants or desires in life. But they're also physical because in order to achieve such desires, you need to perform various actions that are going to contribute to you obtaining this objective. And then you have to consider why does your character want it? What will happen when they get it? Or what will happen if they don't get it? And that can also be known as the stakes. So if they're high stakes and you really care about obtaining this objective, then they're going to be way more emotional objectives for you to have and usually better objectives for you to have are the ones that have very high stakes because they're way more important and they'll interest you for way longer and that means the audience will be interested in it for way longer. And then you have to consider what's in your character's way, what's preventing them from obtaining such an objective and those are known as obstacles to obtaining the objective and it can often be the case that another character has objectives that are the opposite to your characters known as counter objectives so that whatever their objectives are actively get in the way of your character obtaining their objective. So these obstacles or counter objectives that get in your character's way must be alleviated in some way. So then you need to consider how will your character get it? What is their tactics? And that's what I was talking about earlier as part of how a bit can be described is a character changing their tactics or their method of obtaining a certain objective. So in a scene where they are trying one thing and then trying the next thing, that can be a separate bit for each of those when they're trying different things in order to obtain an objective. And and Stanislavski said that it's important not to divide up a scene too much. So you don't want it to have it every single sentence be a different bit. It should be a couple of sentences or lines at least. There will be smaller moments in the scene that you might consider having separate bits for, but often they can just be marked as smaller moments of decisions where a character decides something and it doesn't necessarily stray from the overall chunk of text. So now we're going to go through an example from Anton Chekhov off the seagull and the script for this can be obtained from gutenberg.org so i'm going to show you guys how we go through act two dividing it up into larger chunks or bits and then i'll go through one of the larger bits and divide it up into smaller bits so you can see that process as well Okay, so we're going to be analyzing Act 2 of Anton Chekhov's The Seagull. So this can be found from gunborg.org. So mainly I'm going to be going through how you get the larger bits. And then I'll choose one specific example to go through dividing that up into smaller bits. 
So you can see the first section here. I'm just going to highlight all of the bits. This first section is all about Arkadina talking about her how she is still so youthful and so much more youthful than Masha, who's younger than her. And Dorn, the doctor, just kind of fods it off a bit and actually really goes on to down here where he says, yes, okay. And then he changes the subject after that. So then he says, nevertheless, I shall continue reading. And this whole section then, they're just talking about the book that's being read. So that change of bit was mainly due to a change in subject matter. So then as we move along, this is when Soren and Nina enter and Medvia Denko. Um, okay, sorry if I butcher any of the names because I don't actually know how all of these are pronounced. But anyways, um, so Soren enters and then this part they're all talking about. Um, I'll go down to about here. They're talking about how beautiful Nina is and then Arkadina tries to sort of cast that aside. She doesn't want, so here she says, we shall spoil her. And she tries to, we shouldn't praise her too much. We shall spoil her. And she tries to change the subject because she doesn't really like when other people are, you know, talked about being beautiful apart from her. So she, this could be also another bit. So if we we're trying to divide this up into smaller bits, we'd see this is her changing the subject and then she starts reading her book again. They talk about the book a bit here again. And then it moves on to the discussion about Kostya. And then, so they're talking about him for a little bit. And then Soren starts sleeping. So this whole section here is all talking about Soren and him being unwell. So this can definitely be broken up into smaller sections. So first it's talking about him being asleep here and then it's saying, oh, you're so unhealthy. And then it's saying he should go away to become better. And then it's you should give up smoking. And then in here, Soren starts to become very defensive and <clears throat> says it's not his like, you know, he's never had the life experiences of Dorn and everything like that. So. That could definitely be broken up into about four smaller bits. So we'd see that as a scene. And then within that, about four smaller bits that that could summarize that quite well. And then Masha leaves and they talk about her for a little bit. And then they talk about how boring it is to live in the countryside and everything. And then this, we have another scene here between Shamrauf and Arkadina going off to about here yeah where she leaves so it starts off with pleasantries and then it starts coming up about you know Arkadina wants to head into town where will she get the horses and Shamraif is the horse um like manager he manages where the horses will be and everything like that so he starts saying well we don't have any horses and then there's a big back and forth argument here, definitely with some smaller objectives. You could add in extra bits into all these different sections. So that's another sort of scene there with some subsections. And then after everyone leaves, there's this people talking about that as well. So this is sort of part of the aftermath of that whole blowout. And then this is the scene that I'll go through in a bit more detail. So we have a small scene here with Dorn and Paulina. Or Paulina. So this scene here, I'll divide it up into smaller bits so that we can see how you do that. So this is definitely one chunk because here it's just Dorn and pa Paulina left because everyone else has left. And at the end, they leave as well. Um, so this scene here, by the end of this, they both have left. So that's one large chunk. And then within that, first of all, it's Dorn saying that Paulina's husband, Shamrev, is terrible and everything like that and she agrees she says she can't endure his rough ways so we might see that that's her way of telling um Eugene Dorn that she is unhappy with her situation and then then you can see she changes the subject massively here because she starts telling Eugene she wants the two of them to go away so they've obviously been having some sort of affair and Dorn sort of casts this off and says, I'm too old to change 
anything I don't want to make a change and everything like that so that's another small bit there and then Paulina starts talking about her jealousy so she says that you know it's because of the fact that Doran has loads of women around him that he doesn't want to be with her and he doesn't really do much to change her mind but anyways she sort of changes her mind herself by saying oh I understand you can't get away from women it's not your fault and everything and then Nina sort of joins the conversation so previously she'd been seen picking a bunch of flowers and that seems to be part of what's upset Paulina and then this short conversation here between them so Nina tells them what's going on inside and Doran says let's go in and help them with some chamomile tea Nina hands Doran some flowers and then as the as Doran and Paulina are heading in Nina Paulina says what pretty flowers and then she says give me those flowers give them to me and tears them to pieces so Doran seems like a fairly passive person in this scene and Paulina's definitely the one taking off the situation and this could also be brought, broken up into two but I don't know if that's really necessary if we're looking from Paulina's perspective we wouldn't really do that so if we go back here you can see in the first sort of bit, it's Paulina's sort of goal to say how much she is unhappy. And then she wishes to get Dorne to take her away. And then she wants Dorne to sort of tell her that she's being silly with jealousy and that he loves her or something. And then at the end, she just wants him away from Nina pretty much. That's that example there hope that was helpful so guys that's all i have for you today i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like and if you have any questions or any videos that you'd like me to do in the future please let me know in the comments below as i said this is a series on this channel so if you want to see more of these stanislavski related videos i definitely suggest that you would subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when there's new videos as well as checking out the playlist of previous videos that i've made about stanislavski's system and i'll see you guys in the next video